Hi, my name is Josiah Toll. Uh, you are here because you saw the Utopia Process trailer, or for another reason, it could be anything, uh, and this is going to be my first devlog. I am hoping to do one of these every two weeks, uh, just kind of showing off things that are happening in the game, what I'm doing. They're all going to be very rambly, very me just talking about my process and what I'm doing. These are going to be very similar to Tom Francis's uh, devlogs. Uh, if you go to Tom Francis's YouTube channel, he's the guy who's made Gunpoint, Heat Signature. Absolutely fantastic dev, uh, and this is kind of how he does his devlogs. He just kind of sits down and talks to a camera. I don't have a camera, so it's just going to be voiceover and probably pixel art. The first game that I am putting out is Utopia Process, which is a game where you control two ships at once, hitting the left key... Uh, makes both ships go left, right key makes both ships go right, hitting left and right at the same time separates the ships. You defend four cities and try to keep everyone safe. It is a single screen arcade game and I think a lot of people are going to like it. It's dirt simple, deceptively so, and there's going to be some surprises. Uh, I'm just going to say that much. I'm keeping a few things kind of close to uh, the chest. Uh, me personally, I am Josiah Toll, as said, and I am a part-time game developer. I went to school to learn game design, but that did not last long, and I went into art instead. Uh, that went much further, uh, but even then, that did not all the way complete. I Now I'm just in the normal working world. I got a 8 to 5, 40 hours a week. So this is all being done in my spare time. Okay, so I wanted to get back into game development, and now that it had to be a hobby instead of a full-time pursuit, I needed to do something small, but I wanted to do something on my terms. So I went kind of all in. I did something that uh, is not advisable, and I don't think anyone else should do it. Um, if I ever start bragging in the future that this is how all games should be made, punch me in the face. I decided that I wanted to make it so that I did everything. While I am using an engine and I am using software to help, uh, I have done all the music, all the graphics, uh, written all the code, basically done everything but the typefaces, uh, and that is not really a good way to do it. You really want to make things as quickly as possible, and if that means getting content packs or the like, it's a good idea. But this game is as much about me figuring out what I want to do in game development as anything else, and doing all these different parts has really put into focus what I want to spend my time on. I'm definitely going to be making more music. I'm going to be simplifying my art process so I can make more faster. So this is one of those things where even if everything fails miserably uh, and the game doesn't go well, I have learned a lot. As you can see, I am hedging bets already in the first devlog, but it's true. I have actually learned a lot, and this has been a really good experience so far. The entire reason I wanted to make this was that I love arcade games. Uh, Galaga is basically the first three-generation game that I know of, in that my grandfather uh, liked to play it at work, so he showed my dad, and then my dad showed it to me. And so Galaga is just incredibly important to me and my family. And so I wanted to make an arcade game. This got codified when the uh, developer House Marquee put out a statement that they would not be making arcade games anymore. And that was really sad. The thing that I liked about their arcade games compared to other developers is that they absolutely put context into their arcade games. You go back and look at uh, Galaga, uh, Pac-Man, and they had these just incredible incredible situations. Missile Command, uh, you were doing something. The game was not just about regurgitating aspects of a genre, because those genres really didn't exist yet, and so I kind of wanted to do something that went back to that. House Marquee was amazing at this, especially in Resogun. Every time you uh, booted up the game, you just heard, save the last humans, and so suddenly you knew that you were doing more than just score chasing. Uh, this is one of the big reasons why you're protecting cities in my game, and why all the graphics aren't just shiny triangles, fighting shiny squares. Which, that's something that I very much got kind of uh, snooty about, but then I had to go and make all the art for it, and I went, oh, that's why people make games that are shiny triangles shooting at shiny squares. It looks good, uh, and you can design around it. I'm still glad that I went for this very maximalist visual approach, which you have seen in the trailer, uh, with the uh, green and red enemies, uh, the highly contrasting colors on the horizon, uh, the unique cities, all that. I'm glad I did it, because I don't think I could have made an interesting title 
out of another game where a triangle has to shoot a bunch of squares. Geometry Wars kind of already ate everyone's launch on that. The kind of origin of this game is that I was actually trying to design games around a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, if you go to older arcade games, they uh, either had vertical screens or uh, more square-shaped screens, and especially in 2D games where you're not scrolling around anywhere and uh, the entire play space is kind of set, aspect ratio actually changes a lot. You can't see up as much. And so making a game where you're having to cover a bunch of space in a horizontal plane, I thought was really interesting. Uh, that is what the first prototype was, is just me going through a bunch of prototypes trying to make a cool uh, 16 by 9 arcade game. Um, and this is what I landed on. Polish it up, add a bunch of creepy monsters to fight, cities to save, and you are good to go. The game is mostly set in stone. It's not going to be a heavily random game. Uh, there are only the four cities and the four power-ups that accompany them, each city giving you a power-up on a timer based on how good that power-up is. Um, and it does change the order, meaning that if you have a favorite that you absolutely want to defend every game, you are going to be defending different uh, screen space every time. So outside of light randomization, it, it very much is a set experience. And just since we're getting close to the end of this first one, uh, the game's going to be less than $5 when it comes out, and by that I don't mean $4.99. It's going to be less than $5. Uh, with all that said, I think this is going to wrap up the first devlog. I'm hopefully going to get better at these as time goes on. There should be links in the bottom so that you can wishlist the game on Steam. That helps me out a ton. Uh, it lets Algorithm Daddy notice me. And with that, y'all have a nice day, stay safe, and... By my game.